Hi there, and welcome back to Wine with Andy. I'm Andy. Today we're continuing with our little series of the essential building blocks of wine flavour. We've done sugar, we've done acid, and today we're doing tannin. Those puckering little mouth bandits. Now tannins are pretty much a red wine thing, so we've got a couple of red wines here to taste. I mentioned last time the wines you'd need to get to taste along with me. We've got one Pinot Noir and one Cabernet Sauvignon, both from the same country. The choice of country was up to you. I've gone for Chile, but you could have chosen somewhere else, that's fine. If you don't have the wines in front of you right now, don't worry, you can pause the video here, run off to the shop and be back in no time with those two bottles. There's a bit more information in the description down below about what you need. So tannins, what are they? Where do they come from? Well, we know that they're those things that dry out the inside of the mouth. They give that puckering sensation, they're astringent. And in wine, they come from the skins, the seeds, and the stalks of the grapes. But they're not just in grapes, they're in a lot of other fruits and in plants more generally as well. And they form part of the plant's defensive system. They're particularly present in underripe fruits, and that's because they're there to produce exactly that mouth-drying sensation that you get from a really tannic wine. They're there to discourage animals from eating the fruit before it's fully ripe and before the seeds are ready to go off and germinate when they get pooed out the other end of the animal. In plants more generally, they form kind of part of the immune system of the plant. So I mentioned last time we tasted red wines that the reason that uh, drying sensation happens is because the tannins bind on to the proteins on the skin inside your mouth. Well, they do the same thing with proteins on things like viruses or bacteria, and they help protect the plant against sickness. So if a plant gets damaged and bacteria and viruses get in, the tannins can help stop it getting ill. So the reason tannins are kind of a red wine thing is because of where they come from, the seeds, skins and stalks. When you make a white wine, you crush your grapes and then you drain off the juice really quickly. So it doesn't have much time in contact with the sort of gunk, the seeds, skins and stalks that are left over for the tannins to dissolve out of them. When you make a red wine, you crush those grapes, and then, because you want to extract the colour from the skins, you might remember I mentioned before that actually the juice that you get from most red wine grapes is clear. And we can tell this from Pinot Noir, because Pinot Noir we know as a red wine, but actually Pinot Noir is one of the major three grapes that go into Champagne, which is generally white. But anyway, that's kind of a tangent. When you make red wine, you crush your grapes, you then leave the grape sort of skins and stalks and seeds sitting in contact with the juice so that that colour can be dissolved out. And with the colour, you get tannins. So it sits there, it sort of macerates, that's the technical term for it, it ferments, and then after the fermentation, you squish it all down and get rid of the uh, skins and the gunk and just keep the, the now fermented juice, which is baby wine. Well, I think that's enough waffle from me. Let's move on to the tasting part of this. I've got my two identical glasses here ready to go, and uh, let's get pouring. I've got my Pinot Noir here. I'm going to put that in my left-hand glass. There we go. And my Cabernet Sauvignon in my right-hand glass. So straight away, we can see a bit of a difference, but that's jumping the gun a little bit. First step is to look. So let's look. Pick up the glasses, tilt them, and as we tilt them, that difference that you could see straight away becomes even more apparent. The Pinot Noir that I've got here is actually, I can see through it, I can see the table through it whereas the Cabernet Sauvignon is opaque in the middle. But besides that, the colour is very different. So the Cabernet Sauvignon has a very much deeper colour than the Pinot Noir. It's a sort of dark purpley red, whereas the Pinot Noir is a lighter sort of cherry red. And that's kind of a clue about where the tannins might be going. 
because you might kind of intuitively expect that a wine with more colour has more tannin because they come from the same place, the skin of the grape. And in general, that's pretty much right. There are some exceptions to the rule though. Some very tannic grape varieties produce quite light coloured wine. Okay, we've done look. What's next? That's right, it's sniff. Let's pick up the glass and have a sniff. Okay, so the Pinot Noir, I've got red fruit. We're thinking category of fruit first, so red fruit. I'm thinking maybe narrow that down a bit. It's red berries, it's sort of slightly sour red berries, like a cranberry or a red currant. That's pretty good. Happy with that. Uh, onto the, the Cabernet Sauvignon. Category of fruit. It's darker fruit. It's, it's probably darker berry fruit. I, I'm thinking black currant for this one. Got a pair of currants, red currant, black currant. Hmm, what can you do? I'm just going to revisit that. We've done, we've done category. Let's think about ripeness now. So they're kind of ripe and juicy red currants. They're not overripe, they're not underripe. And there's something a little bit greenish. It's not like green underripe green. It's like you happen to be eating red currant in a forest green. Onto the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And that's, it's ripe. I'd say it's very ripe fruit. It's not jammy, it's not cooked, but it is very ripe fruit. So we've done our first sniff. We need now to swirl and sniff and see what else comes out of the glass to greet us. So give the uh, Pinot Noir a swirl. There's a little bit more of the fruit. There's more of that sort of uh, foresty flavour. There's something a little bit floral in there as well. Alongside uh, those kind of fruity flavours that you get from the grapes, you can also get other planty type flavours. So you can get flowery smells as well. This one smells a little bit like a violet kind of a smell maybe. Onto the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon here. And there's a little bit of uh, something herbal and green, uh, maybe mint there alongside it. And just, just the edge creeping in of maybe some dark chocolate, like, uh, like an after dinner mint. Mm. Next step, taste. And this is where we're actually going to be able to feel those tannins. If you remember, we feel the tannins on the inside of our mouth. So the, real, re the way to really accentuate that is to swirl the wine around between your teeth and the inside of your lips. And you'll feel the tannins on the inside of your lips. So let's go with the uh, Pinot Noir first. Don't forget to make those silly faces and silly noises to suck the air through. So, we're thinking about tannins today, so I'll do that first. Tannins. Now, this is the first wine I've had today, so the, the, the effect of anything that I taste is going to be a little bit exaggerated, so I have to bear that in mind. Uh, I've not had anything to compare it to beforehand. But even, even so, those tannins, I can feel them, they're there on the inside of my mouth, but they're quite light. Um, this is a very soft, gentle, easy drinking kind of a wine. Onto the flavour, well, the flavours are still more, more of those kind of red fruits, a bit of forestiness going on, maybe something a little bit floral. Same flavours that, that we were smelling before. Uh, what else can we do in the mouth? We can do acid. We th we've thought about acid before. Uh, this has got quite high acidity. Um, for the sort of amount of wine, the, the sort of texture, it feels very light, which is a hint that there's quite a decent amount of acid in there. Alcohol, well, I, I can't really feel much burn, so I don't think it's particularly alcoholic. Um, and sugar, well, no, it's a dry wine. There's probably a tiny amount, but it's a dry wine. It's, it's um, in that category. On the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Mm, 
Mm. 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 Ah, yes. Tannins. They're there. They're, they're very much there. So this, there's much more tannin going on in this, in this wine. Uh, much more. Still quite smooth, but much grippier. Um, on the flavours, what have we got? We've got more of that kind of black currant flavour. We've got more of that mint. And actually, on the finish, right at the end, there's that dark chocolate really creeping in. I know dark chocolate might sound like a bit of a funny thing to taste in a wine, but, well, hey, I'm just making it up. We're not here to follow any strict guidelines. We're just saying what comes into our minds and, and doing it for personal reasons, for, for love of, of the wine. So uh, there's no rules on what's right or wrong. So we've done taste now. We have to think about the finish. I've, I've done that for that one. I, I need to go back for, for the finish on the Pinot. Mm. Decent finish. Finishes with that nice, nice red fruit. I can taste that after I've swallowed the wine. It's a little bit shorter than the, the Cabernet Sauvignon, actually. Uh, there's a bit more intensity in, in, in the Cabernet. Now, the final and most important part of the wine tasting think. Now these are obviously very different wines. We could tell that straight away when we poured them out. The Pinot Noir looked a lot lighter, was a lot lighter. The Cabernet Sauvignon looked a lot heavier, was a lot heavier. It's, was, it's not a massive heavy wine, but it is much bigger than the Pinot Noir. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us something about body, or rather it reflects something about the body of these wines. Body is a slightly odd wine term. It kind of reflects how big the wine feels to you. So I'd say that the Pinot Noir is a light bodied wine. It has that nice lightness from the acidity and it has those soft tannins. Whereas the, the um, Cabernet Sauvignon here is a sort of medium to full bodied wine. It's much, much more tannic. It's got more sort of texture. It feels bigger in the mouth. Uh, I'm kind of describing this quite poorly, but uh, it's, it's sort of a, a weird um, sort of synesthetic kind of a thing. It's obviously not bigger. They're the same size. They're both liquids. That's a ridiculous thing to say. But they, they, this one feels sort of richer and oilier than this one in the mouth. Now, the, the sort of body and the tannins in the wine are useful for matching with food, of course, because you can match the, the richness of the wine to the richness of the food, and the, the sort of heaviness of the wine to the heaviness of the food. So you could have a Pinot Noir with a lighter set of foods than you could with a Cabernet Sauvignon, and it wouldn't overpower it. So Pinot Noir, uh, this would go very nicely with a tuna steak, for example, whereas the, the Cabernet Sauvignon would go probably better with a lamb chop uh, which is clearly a sort of a richer and heavier meat. Now maybe it's worth you taking, a, taking another second to uh, compare these wines, and whilst you do that, I'd just like to highlight one of them, the Cabernet Sauvignon, which, which was very good. But the wine I've got, wines I've got this week are both actually from uh, Waitrose, and this one, the Cabernet Sauvignon, is their own label wine. Now, I think there's probably a bit of kind of snobbery about uh, drinking own label wines. But actually, if you want good value, the own label wines in a supermarket are a great place to look. So, for example, this wine is great, but also in, in, in Waitrose, if you want a, a bottle of wine for five pounds, then the Waitrose own label wines at that price point are pretty much as good as you can get for that money. So. They, they have this kind of massive buying power and they have the ability to sort of give uh, producers security over multiple years as well. So they can get good wine for, for less money uh, and they can pass on that saving to you. Now, it does look a bit naff to take an own label wine around to somebody's house if you're visiting for dinner or something. Um, but for your own, own personal pleasure, uh, then certainly own label wines are a great place to look. Now, hopefully, whilst I, I've been having that, that little um, 
little waffle in praise of uh, own label wines, you, you've been able to, to think a bit more about which of these wines you like more than the other. My preference is actually for the Cabernet Sauvignon. Even without food, the extra weight to it uh, is, is just uh, makes it more interesting to me. That's not to say that I don't like the Pinot Noir. And in fact, drinking on its own, I'd probably go with the Pinot Noir, just because the, the weight of that Cabernet Sauvignon would get a bit tiring after a few glasses. Well, that's all the tasting for this episode. Uh, let's have a look at the wines you're going to need for next time. Now, next time is actually going to be the last of this introductory series. And we're going to be looking at a final sort of essential building block of wine flavour, one that I've mentioned before in this series, but we haven't talked too much about. Oak. So for this, I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of label detective work again. We're going to need to get one unoaked Chardonnay and one oaked Chardonnay, both from the same country, just like today, the choice of country is up to you. I've gone for France this time, but you could choose uh, any country you like. We could go back to Chile, you could have uh, South Africa, you could have Australia. Just uh, have a read of those back labels and check that, that it says that one of them has been matured in oak and it doesn't mention oak on the other one uh, and we should be good. So uh, I've got these uh, actually from, from Waitrose again, same as this one, but uh, I'm sure there'll be something suitable in, in whichever supermarket you normally go to. And with that, I'm going to finish off enjoying my Cabernet Sauvignon, and I would encourage you to do the same. Cheers. <laughs>